All right, um, so I'd like to tell you a bit about the ideas and visions for our new uh, center. So as already mentioned, my name is uh, Christian Flint, and I started here as an assistant professor around um, two months ago. And also, I was uh, chosen as the director for the, for the center here. So the next 20 minutes, uh, I'd like to tell you a bit about uh, quantum engineering, in particular quantum engineering at Alto University. Then I'll tell you about our new uh, center, who are the participants, who's the management, who are the participating groups, and also uh, what are the activities that we plan uh, in the future. And then finally, I'll give you a bit of outlook uh, for the program of today. So I'll start with the question, uh, what is uh, quantum engineering? And I'm not sure I can give a very uh, strict definition, but uh, during today we'll see several different talks that hopefully will give us some idea about what quantum engineering is. Nevertheless, if I should try to make my own definition, I would look at this kind of uh, flow of processes. So I would say, well, quantum engineering for me is something where we start with some fundamental research in quantum physics and quantum uh, mechanics. And then building on that understanding, we want to develop new quantum technologies and applications. And then of course, at the end of the day, we'd like to see these applications crystallize into companies and uh, spin-offs. Perhaps another way of thinking about quantum engineering is that it's something that requires engineers with knowledge of quantum physics. So there's a strong and uh, long tradition of quantum engineering here at Alto, so I'll just show you some examples uh, where this kind of processes have taken place. So this is um, an example of a discovery that was made in 2003. It's basically a, a sensor for thermal uh, radiation that was developed here. And it was realized that this you could use for imaging. So you imagine you have some person here that radiates heat or thermal radiation. Then you can uh, image this uh, radiation. And in this case, you can see that you have this body here, but there are some cold parts here, perhaps a, a weapon there hinder, uh, hidden under the jacket there. So this kind of technology was then further developed, and eventually you got some prototype out here for a passive video camera, and then eventually uh, this company Esquela was founded in 2013. So I think this is an excellent example of these kind of processes where you go from some fundamental research and you go all the way into to a company. You also see the time uh, scales involved here. So the discovery was made in 2003, and the company was established in 2013. So it takes a bit of time. One has to be patient. Another example is uh, Blue Force. This was a company that was uh, established in 2008, and this was really a spin-off from all the knowledge and expertise here at Alto in uh, low temperature physics and in cryogenics. So this company, they basically started to produce these cryogen-free dilution refrigerators, and these are now sold to companies all over the world. They're, for example, used in clinical uh, MEG scanners. They're also used in many places for various kinds of uh, quantum technology. So this is really another good uh, success story here, and this was uh, a very fast-growing um, Finnish company. <coughs> but okay, we can, of course, imagine uh, other fields of research here also that eventually could develop into new uh, applications and technologies. So here's uh, at least a list of some of the activities in uh, quantum science research at Alto. So we have computational device physics, material physics, plasmonics, quantum metrology, optics, optomechanics, quantum thermodynamics, there's spintronics, quantum nanoelectronics, scanning probe microscopy, semiconductor nano devices, cold atomic gases, and topological matter. So we have a lot of fundamental research, and of course, the, of course the hope is that based on this research, we can eventually develop some new uh, technologies and applications. We also have very good uh, infra, infrastructures and facilities to do this kind of research. So in particular, we have what is called OTA Nano, which consists of the Micronova Nanofabrication Center, the Nano Microscopy Center, and the Low Temperature Lab. So we really have excellent uh, experimental facilities. There's also centers of excellence working on uh, quantum physics. Particularly, we have the uh, center of excellence in computational nanoscience and the center of excellence in low temperature quantum phenomena and devices. 
And of course, there we have built up a lot of expertise and knowledge. And it's worth noticing that these centers are both ending in not so far from now. So there's, of course, a lot of know-how that we like to uh, not lose, and we want to carry it over into our new center for quantum engineering. <clears throat> of course, we receive funding, so these centers are funded by Academy of Finland, and we have our collaborators, for example, VTT and MICAS. And of course, we also get uh, funding from the, from the European level. <clears throat> and it's, I think, worth noticing that these kind of quantum engineering initiatives are now popping up all over the world. So here I just mentioned some examples. At Caltech, they have their Institute for Quantum Information and Matter, founded in 2008. And Singapore, there's the Center for Quantum Technology. University of Copenhagen, we have the Center for Quantum Devices. We'll hear more about that later today. In Japan, at Riken, there's the Center for Emergent Matter Science. In Delft, they have the QTech Center. And now in Zurich, they're also opening a quantum engineering center. And also many um, funding agencies are now getting interested in this topic. So the UK Research Council is now putting a lot of money into quantum technologies. We have at the European level. Also, if you look, for example, at Switzerland, there's also a big effort into this field. And then, of course, in terms of companies, also many things are happening. So later today, we'll both hear from D-Wave Systems and from ID Quantique. And also at the, say, even larger level, we have companies like Nokia, Google, IBM, and Philips that are also getting increasingly uh, interested in, in this field. So I think it's really now the right time that uh, Alto also gets uh, a center here uh, for quantum engineering. So now I'd like to tell you a bit about the, say, short history of uh, the center so far. So I'll tell you a bit from my uh, perspective. Um, so I call this slide the fast fins, and this is because until February this year I was working in Switzerland, and sometimes in Switzerland things uh, are a bit perhaps slower. Uh, so coming here I felt that things were going very fast. Things really move ahead once the decision is made, things uh, move ahead. So in the fall of 2014, uh, I heard about the Center of Quantum Engineering for the first time. I was having a Skype conversation with Yuka Pekula, and he mentioned, oh, by the way, we're thinking about opening this new uh, Center for Quantum Engineering, and would you be interested in be part of that? And I said, well, okay, I don't really know the details, but without knowing the details, I'll tend to say yes rather than no. So, okay, so just count me in. Then in October 17th, I received the first draft for a proposal for the Center, and I got the opportunity to comment a bit on that, and this was then eventually uh, submitted. Then on December 6th, we were told that uh, the Alto School of Science had granted 300,000 euros to start up the activity, so that basically meant we had a green light for the center. So officially the center was started on January 1st. Then on January 23, uh, I was chosen as the director. We chose our coordinator and the scientific advisory board. I'll come back to the, who these people are in a moment. And then on January 31st, I had finally packed everything in Switzerland, and so my family and I, we were ready to move, so we arrived uh, on a Saturday evening in the snow here in uh, Finland. And then Monday morning, I had my first day at Alto, and then I suddenly was very busy because uh, we had the first board meeting here on February uh, 6, so that was on the Friday. So I had to uh, study a lot about this uh, new center here so I could present it uh, to the board. So we had our board meeting there, and it was a very efficient two-hour meeting. We decided on a lot of things. Uh, among uh, other things, that we were going to have the kickoff meeting that we're having today. And also, uh, we would open the first call for proposals, that, which would also be uh, open today. Then we decided that we were going to have our second board meeting on June 15th. And uh, at that meeting there, we will, among other things, decide on what proposals to, to, to fund. And then hopefully, uh, we would like to see that all these uh, first projects are then running already uh, by the fall 2015. So I think this was uh, quite fast developments. And just to give you a bit of perspective from where I came before, I'll show you a bit of a, it's a bit of a sidetrack. In fact, there's a little side story here. So this is an example of a project that was done in Geneva where uh, they wanted to connect uh, Conavan, so that's the central uh, rail station in Geneva with Anmas, which is the neighboring uh, French uh, city. And they started the construction work in 2012 and they're projecting it that it will be done in 2020. And you see down here, this is a picture from the starting of the construction work, and you see people are really very happy because this was actually a historical event. And if you wonder why it was a historical event, you have to look a bit at the process of uh, reaching the decision to build this railway. It was actually proposed 
for the first time in 1850, and the first contract to, where they agreed to, to build this uh, railway was signed in 1912. So this is a quite different uh, time scale here. So for that reason, coming here, I suddenly felt that the fins were very fast. Okay, so let me now uh, talk a bit about the participants uh, in the center. So as I already mentioned, I'm uh, directing the center. But obviously, I cannot do all this uh, work uh, on my own, so I'm lucky that I have a lot of uh, support. Uh, so among others, I have um, the scientific uh, advisory board, so that's what I call uh, the dream team. Uh, so they help me with a lot of things, both on a practical level, and they also come with a lot of uh, input and advice on, on how to do things. So just to present you with these people here, we have uh, Esko Kaupanen, who's a professor of physics at Alto, and will also talk later today. Then there's Antti Niskanen, who's a research leader at Nokia Labs in Cambridge, UK. We have uh, Yuka Pekula, who's a professor of physics. There's Mika Prunila, who's a research team leader at the VTT, uh, the Technical Research uh, Institute of Finland. And then there's Patrick Rinke, who's also a, a newly started uh, associate professor here uh, at Alto. Then in addition to this uh, dream team, and I also have what I call the dream coordinator, Mina Gunnes, who's sitting down there in the back. And I think it's safe to say that the center could not operate on an everyday basis without Mina. So she really takes care of many, many things. And there's a lot of uh, coordination and communication uh, going through uh, Mina. So you probably already received an email from this uh, email address here. And we also have our uh, homepage, which you can find here on this uh, address. Then in addition to the coordinator and the scientific advisory board, then of course we have participating groups. And this has actually not yet been uh, sort of totally uh, defined. Um, but the basic idea is that we're in some sense a quite open and open-minded uh, research initiative. And so the way it works is that those uh, research groups that are interested in this field and would like to be part of the center, they can ask to be listed uh, on our homepage. And so the way you should do this is simply send an email to Mina with a short description of your research and how it's related uh, to what we do at the center. And possibly also if you have a nice uh, picture, we can include that uh, in the home page. And then, of course, if you write papers and you're a member of the center, then you can acknowledge that uh, in, in the papers. <coughs> OK, so one of the activities that we plan So I would say, well, first of all, uh, we're a rather flexible activity with an open focus. So to begin with here, we are, have not totally determined exactly what we would like to do. Uh, but this is, of course, something we are along the way hope to develop some more uh, clear focus lines there. And then to begin with, we are quite open to uh, suggestions and ideas. And of course, the very important thing is that the center, well, that's the sum of the uh, members. So in some sense, uh, you, uh, are the center. And then I think, uh, finally, the last important point here is that we've only seen several of these centers appearing around the world, and they each have their expertise. And then I think it's important that we don't try to copy what other people are doing, uh, but rather we should build on those areas uh, where we already uh, have a strong tradition and expertise, or where we are building uh, strong expertise. So in terms of speci specific activities, so we're going to have these uh, CQE-funded research projects right here, co-funded, because we would like also to see uh, some funding coming from the uh, participants themselves. But there will be more information about that here in the, in the first call that opens today. Then we would like to have a visitor program so we can have experts in quantum engineering pass through the center and exchange ideas with us. We'd like to have seminars and workshops related to this topic. We'd like to organize at least every second year uh, a summer school. And of course, it would also be nice if we could develop new courses uh, for students here uh, at Alto. So the first call uh, for proposals opens today, and I'm just going to give you at least some brief uh, guidelines here. So basically, we don't want to uh, have very long proposals. It should be easy and uh, fast to write a proposal, so we limit the proposals to what we call two pages. So please limit it to two pages. Projects can last up to two years. We would like to focus on uh, proposals that bring some new ideas and also new collaborations uh, within the university. And we hope with the 
funding that we have now that we can co-fund, say, six to ten uh, projects this year, and then hopefully we can have new calls next year. Uh, so in preparation uh, for this, uh, for this uh, first call here, we are organizing a workshop on Friday. I think most of you may have heard about this. If there are some PIs who would still like to be part of the workshop, then you can contact uh, Mina and be uh, signed up. So basically the call opens today and it closes in a month from now. That's where we have the deadline. And then as mentioned, um, on June 15th, we're going to make the decision on the um, proposals that we'll uh, fund. And this will, here we will rely on external reviewers um, to, to, to guide our decision there. And then as mentioned, we hope to have the, these, these projects start in the fall of 2015. And there should be further instructions here concerning this call on this uh, website here. Uh, it, it may be up already now. <coughs> okay, so let me just um, briefly get back to the rest of today's program. So we already had the talk by Tuya Pulkinen, and in a moment I'll stop uh, talking as well. Uh, and then I'll give the word to uh, Charlie Marcus from uh, the Center for Quantum Devices at the University of Copenhagen, who will talk about the, this Majorana-based quantum information. Then we have a shorter talk by uh, Miko Mötzenen, who is a local group leader here at Alto. And then at 2.45, we'll have a coffee break outside. Then at 3 o'clock, we have a talk by Colin Williams from D-Wave Systems, followed by Esko Kaupenin from, from Alto. And we have Sabrina Maniscalco, who's visiting from Turco Center for Quantum Physics. And then finally, we have Kelly Richdale from ID Quantique in uh, Switzerland. And then uh, at the end of the day, I might come back with a few uh, concluding remarks. And I'll also say, if there are no urgent questions now, then uh, if you, during the day, uh, think about some questions concerning the center, or you have some comments, then we can also take uh, them uh, during these uh, concluding remarks. And then finally, we will go outside and have a, a drink and, and something to eat. So thank you for your attention.